time to barbecue. No, no, no. It's time to fire walk. Oh, I ain't no employee. No. Hey, hey. Daddy, allow me to introduce you to my Malcolm. Young man, I love my daughter very much. Please state your intentions, and they'd better be to my liking. He really did not get along. In real life? In real life. In I real did life. not know yes. this. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, entertainment enthusiasts, to an intriguing peek behind the curtains of the hit TV sitcom Malcolm and Eddie. While audiences laughed along with the on-screen chemistry of Malcolm Jamal Warner and Eddie Griffin, tension simmered beneath the surface. Join us as we uncover the complexities of their off-screen relationship, from scripted banter to real-life clashes. Strap in for a revealing journey through the drama that unfolded behind the scenes of this beloved show. Have you ever wondered what happens when you throw together a sitcom's golden boy and a stand-up wild card into the urban jungle of sitcom land? Let's talk Malcolm and Eddie, the show where UPN decided to stir the pot by pairing Malcolm Jamal Warner, our beloved Theo from The Cosby Show, with the ever-unpredictable Eddie Griffin. Picture it, the ultimate urban odd couple, where one's the embodiment of responsibility, Malcolm, obviously, and the other's a walking, talking chaos generator. Eddie, who else? But ever heard of drama behind the drama? Yup, while Malcolm and Eddie were busy dodging life's curveballs and running a bar on screen, off screen was a whole different sitcom. Rumor has it the bromance wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Creative differences weren't just a fancy term, but a reality, with our dynamic duo locking horns with the very brains behind the operation, the writers and producers. Who would have thought? Sitcom life, am I right? Every single uh, week before taping, we'd come together, mm -hmm. we'd put our hands together, we'd bow, and we'd pray before we go out there. Why y'all didn't get along? Just d different schools of, of life. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. different schools of life. And we were, you know, and, and we, we're still cool when we see each other, but it wasn't like we weren't, necess we weren't necessarily best friends. Did you hear about Malcolm's less than stellar time on Malcolm and Eddie? Believe it or not, he felt it was a mere shadow of the iconic The Cosby Show days. Imagine going from groundbreaking to ground shaking. But here's the real tea. The show's downfall wasn't just about the ratings dip or the never-ending game of musical chairs in the executive suite. The kicker, Malcolm and Eddie were more like oil and water than a dynamic duo behind the scenes. Now, that's got to sting a bit, especially for the fans. But it begs the question, what was really brewing behind those closed studio doors to cause such a rift? Was it creative differences, or was there more to the story? Let's dive into the drama and uncover the juicy details. Who knew sitcom life could be so soap opera-esque? Malcolm Warner hit the big time early on with his gig as Theo Huxtable on The Cosby Show. After acing the audition on the very last day of a nationwide hunt, he got the nod from none other than Bill Cosby himself. It was like winning the lottery for a 14-year-old, and you can bet it gave his ego a serious boost. Based on my career, if anybody you know, should walk around with a huge ego, it should be me. Right. And if I don't roll like that, mm -hmm. I don't really, I have very little tolerance for people who roll like that. Mm -hmm. So we never really, we really, we just never really got along back then. But, you know, we're grown now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and Carl's been through a lot. Like his journey is, you know, it's, it's been, you know, it's, he's had a journey. In the wild world of Hollywood, where former child stars are more likely to end up on a where are they now list than on the A list, Warner stands out, but not necessarily for the reasons you'd expect. This dude somehow zigzagged through the minefield of fame without ever becoming tabloid fodder or the poster child for child stars gone wild. Instead, he's like that one guy from high school who everyone remembers but can't quite figure out what he's up to now. Warner's still best remembered for his days as a Huxtable. And let's be real, in the grand reunion of former child stars, he's probably still wearing that iconic sweater. But don't let the quiet post-sitcom life fool you. The man's been hustling. He's popped up everywhere from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as Hillary's latest squeeze, a role that had us all questioning, wait, is that? To playing a homeless man on Touched by an Angel, proving his acting chops can stretch further than his character's credit card limits. And while his peers were out there making the tabloids work overtime, Warner was playing it cool, staying away from the Hollywood party circuit. He's the guy who'd rather chill with the real friends he made on set than spill tea or vodka at some overhyped club. 
His career's been like a roller coaster that's part what on earth and part, oh, I remember him, with a side of musical ventures that have us all saying, wait, he sings too? Off screen, Warner's musical side shines with his debut EP, the miles long mixtape. Much of her smile is transfixed by her sexiness, my mind drifts. And his follow up CD, Love and Other Social Issues. He's not just a bass guitar player, he's a performance poet, wowing crowds at the National Black Theater Festival. Warner's versatility extends to dramatic roles, like portraying Al Cowlings in American Crime Story, based on the O.J. Simpson trial. What is your emergency? I have O.J. in the car. He's got a gun to his head. Tell the police to back off. And if you think that's all, think again. Warner's recurring roles on current TV series like USA Network's Suits, TNT's Major Crimes, Amazon Prime's Sneaky Pete, and Fox's The Resident prove that he's not slowing down anytime soon. <laughs> no, that's where I'm gonna have to disagree with you. How's that? I'm not here to enforce, brother. I'm here to empower. But that's not to say his career was without any hiccups. As 1996 dawned, Malcolm was still riding high on his Theo Huxtable persona from The Cosby Show. But there's, you know, there's been this, um, I guess, this, 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 this wave of interpretation that bothers me because if somebody calls me Theo, I'm like, no, my name is Malcolm. Or, but I've always done that. Yeah. Uh, and we understood that you can, uh, you know, work together and still have respect, but don't necessarily have to, you know, love each other. With that iconic role as his only comedic yardstick, he had a pretty narrow view of what flew in the comedy world. Anything that might tarnish the image of a classic African-American archetype was a big no-no in his book. But lo and behold, the creators of Eddie and Malcolm had different ideas. They were all about embracing ragtag humor and stereotypes to reel in the audience. Warner wasn't exactly thrilled. Comedy was his game, and it had to be played his way. He battled fiercely behind closed doors to lift the show's content to new heights. But every step forward seemed to meet resistance. Enter Eddie Griffin, the brash comic with a personality as big as his jokes and a knack for stirring up trouble. Griffin's style clashed head on with Warner's, sparking serious friction between the two. Rumor has it that Warner accused Griffin of undermining his authority and derailing the show's creative vision, pushing tensions to the breaking point. Despite the turmoil behind the scenes, Malcolm and Eddie managed to keep audiences entertained for four seasons. So Malcolm Warner had a knack for mixing business with pleasure, especially during his time on The Cosby Show. First up was his romance with Michelle Thomas, AKA Justine on the show. Unlike your typical Hollywood fling, their relationship had a solid foundation of friendship, genuine affection, and probably some teenage misguided belief in the power of love. They knew each other before they even stepped foot on set and things only heated up as they worked together. Sadly, their love story took a tragic turn when Michelle lost her battle with cancer in 1998. It was devastating for sure, but Malcolm eventually soldiered on as one does in Tinseltown, Hollywood. At every point in her life, Michelle has always made the highest choice. And I kind of hold the way I live my life up against how she lived her life. Even today, when I'm faced with a decision, I go back to Michelle and I say, what choice would Michelle have made? Next up in Malcolm's dating saga was Karen Molina, a.k.a. Charmaine Brown. Despite the significant age gap, they hit it off and dated for a whopping eight years. Now, Malcolm was savvy enough not to slap a label on their relationship. But let's be real. When you're together that long, people start assuming stuff. I think we're seven years apart, six or seven. So when he was on Cosby Show, he was like a little boy. I didn't pay him any mind. Um, but as we got older, you know, numbers would feel like they're closer in age. But that was kind of, I never really dated. I always wound up dating somebody that I was working with. So you'd be friends and then next thing you know, okay, so what are we doing? Uh, so that's how that kind of evolved. But yeah, we were always good friends. Maintaining a relationship while sharing a set came with its own set of challenges though. Eventually they called it quits. But hey, at least they handled it like grown-ups, which is a rare sight in Hollywood. 
Then came Regina King, star of Watchmen and many others. Their whirlwind romance lasted a mere two years before crashing and burning in 2013. During their time together, they even cohabitated with King's son from a previous marriage thrown into the mix. Malcolm stepped up as a pseudo-dad, but when the breakup hit, it hit hard. He blindsided Regina, leaving her and her son scrambling to find a new place to crash. In hindsight, Malcolm reflected on the breakup, lamenting the fact that it garnered more attention than their time together. But hey, that's showbiz for you. Despite the breakup's bitter undertones, Warner publicly applauded King's Emmy win, showcasing his continued respect for her talent and dedication to her craft. Malcolm Jamal Warner sure knows how to navigate those tricky situations, doesn't he? Take, for instance, the whole Bill Cosby debacle. While everyone's been buzzing about it, Malcolm's been as quiet as a mouse. You can practically hear the crickets chirping when someone asks him about it. Now, we all know Malcolm spent a good chunk of his formative years on The Cosby Show. That's like getting a crash course in African-American culture courtesy of Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable himself. So it's no surprise that Malcolm's got some strong feelings about the whole situation. But here's the kicker. While everyone else is throwing shade at Bill, Malcolm's just standing there like, hey, hold up, let's not jump to conclusions. Talk about keeping it diplomatic, right? He's probably got a direct line to the United Nations with those skills. Just that whole situation is so, it's so layered. I, I can't defend him or his actions at all, um, but I also can't throw him under the bus. I have an understanding of, of, of all of the layers. Like it's so complex and there's so many shades of gray. Um, that most people will never get. I mean, think about it. If you spent years hanging out with the guy, cracking jokes on set and soaking up all that TV wisdom, wouldn't you want to give him the benefit of the doubt too? It's like loyalty runs deep in Malcolm's veins. So next time you see Malcolm Jamal Warner dodging questions about Bill Cosby like a pro, just remember, he's not throwing anyone under the bus. He's just keeping it real and showing some love for his TV dad, no matter how messy things get. Being in a relationship with Malcolm wasn't a walk in the park, whether as a friend or a lover. But he always aimed to see things from the other person's perspective. He had seen monumental success throughout his life, and with a net worth of 12 million, there wasn't a lot he was missing out on. What he did understand was that vulnerability and empathy were the cornerstones of lasting relationships, a lesson he'd learned time and again during his stint on The Cosby Show. This outlook on life fueled his love for those around him, but it also landed him in hot water, like his clashes with Eddie on set. Yet credit where it's due, he consistently strived to better the lives of those around him.